What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast, a show where we talk about news, games, and sandwich a little fun in between. I'm one of your hosts, Timothy DeRoe, and joining mm-hmm. me this week is your boy, Michael Clare. Hello. How you, how you doing, Mike, on this fine Sunday? Is it always a fine Sunday? It, it's pretty nice. Yeah, a little, little tad bit too warm for my taste. Yeah, it's the cloudy. was nice. It's cloudy, though. Yeah. I don't like the clouds. We had I'm a also good, a little stuffy. I had a good two days of beautiful weather. Now it's gone. Yep, it's going to start raining more. again. It's been raining for a long time. It's wet. Today we're sponsored by Dr. Pepper, but I'll tell you about that later. That's a joke. Um, but today we are going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about a lot. I would list it for you, but it's a lot. So we're just going to have to wait. Um, but a little bit of housekeeping before we... It, the nostrils are closed. They're closing. Oh, oh housekeeping. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. Do yes, you sir. like this show that we're about to get into? If this you one? do, you should go to patreon.com slash synced up and consider supporting us. Um, at the dollar tier, you can get access to our lovely Discord where we talk about a lot of stuff in there all the time. We play games. We do that kind of jazz. Or you can pay five bucks to get access to post shows of all of our shows, all from youtube.com slash synced up podcast. Or- and... Um, Podcasting services around the globe. Jeez, I don't know why I like pause. You and, never get that one. Bro. I know. I always. I need to like thing. edit it just a little bit, and it'll. Yeah, fix. I feel like it don't flow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, new episodes go up in both of those feeds at uh, 7 a.m. Central the Time, time zone, zone, Gang, gang. Mm-hmm. on Monday. I should have said Monday first. You can also write into the show at the Pod. Uh, no, Gmail dot com. Asking, Jesus Christ. Are you good, G? Synchtopod at gmail.com with any questions, comments, or concerns. Your first time. And we might Jesus read Christ. or talk about them on the show. Also, you should follow us on Twitter at Synchtopod to keep up to date with all of our content from across. You almost nailed that one. At the board. Across the board. Content from the every everywhere on the from this in the middle, in the sides. This is four flaps. Top and in bottom or onto the thing. At Are you Twitter. sure you can do this? Doing that at Twitter. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been on Twitter? Me? Huh? No. We're going to talk about 17 things that we learned from Horizon Forbidden West State of Play. This is from Adam Bankers at IGN. You watch that State of Play, Jordan? No. Okay, Jordan, you did not watch that State of Play. You should watch it. It's real nice. Actually, you shouldn't. You're going to play that game anyway. So I guess there's really no need for you to do that. So 17 things we learned from Adam Bankers at IGN. Thanks, Adam. Sony and Guerrilla Games presented a Horizon Forbidden West State of Play that featured 14 minutes of gameplay for the much-anticipated PS5 and PS4 exclusive. While no release date was given, we did learn a ton, a ton of new details on the sequel to 2017's Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Forbidden West still has no release date on PS5 and PS4, but Guerrilla Games said Shame. development is on track and we'll have an update for you very soon. It gives me a little iffy. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that in a second. This sequel picks up... Also, this game's going to melt a PS4. I don't know how this is going to run. The sequel picks up six months after the events of Horizon Zero Dawn, and Aloy has traveled west to investigate a mysterious and deadly blight. In the state of play gameplay demo, Aloy has sent her friend and returning character Erend character Arend, into the remains of San Francisco to recover an important artifact. He gets captured uh, He gets captured by the Tinoch tribe. Mm-hmm. Is that in the other game, Jordan? Tinoch? The Tinoch tribe? Tinoch? I can't remember how they pronounced it. A rebel faction that has somehow learned how to override and control machines, and Aloy has come to the rescue. The artifact Aaron discovers appears to show a map with the coming storms, including one that appears to be marked Borrow and is approaching Aloy in San Francisco. There was also one in the Caribbean near Cuba and mm-hmm. one in the Gulf of Mexico. Little things. I don't know if maybe that's for DLC. I don't know if that's just the thing that showed there's multiple storms. I don't know, but it's worth noting that there was storms on the Gulf of Mexico and over like the Cuba area. Okay, okay. Aloy will need all the help she can get in Horizon Forbidden West, and many of her new tools will help her not only survive and traverse the world with ease, but give her new options to take on her foes. Mm -hmm. The Pool Caster is a hookshot-type tool that allows her to speed up climbing and reach faraway points to escape danger. Works kind of like a grappling hook. Um, We've seen her use it to attach to, uh, to... robots we've seen her use it to attach to really far away grapple points and we've seen her use it to just launch herself into the air so that was that was really cool the shield wing is a technolo- technologically advanced glider that will not only let her safely descend from great heights but will also let her surprise enemies from above we've seen her combo the pool caster and the shield wing launching herself away from a giant uh, robot and then gliding down in a way um you know, becoming more Breath of the Wild, as yeah. you can see. Uh, the diving mask gives Aloy the ability to swim underwater as long as she needs. Underwater gameplay looks to play a much bigger role, and it will offer, offer Aloy tactical advantages when deciding how to approach certain situations. Cool. Um, yeah, so infinite breath using using the uh, diving mask, but also it was very pretty. Yes. Like reefs and, and seeing the, the robots in there was really, really good looking. We've seen some really big robotic aquatic monsters um i don't know how you're gonna fight those with a bow and arrow underwater mm-hmm. i don't know we'll, we'll figure out but it was very very beautiful underwater aloy's focus ability is also getting an upgrade and will now show areas that are meant to, for free climbing furthermore it gives her the ability to override more machines for mounts or combat really like this mm-hmm. really like this um at first i thought it was an accessibility option seems like it's not but 
works in that same way as accessibility. She hit the little highlight thing, as you know, from uh, past games that would highlight things you could pick up, things you could do, enemies and stuff. Now it puts a little yellow marker over, hey, this is a ledge that you can climb, or this is a grapple point that you can grapple from. Which is cool. Which is, is good, and I think um, helps with accessibility as well. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. Hey, look. There's the burp. I shouldn't have drank Dr. Pepper. Aloy will have a ton of options in combat in Horizon Forbidden West, including her trusty spear that not only excels in close combat and features a new set of combos, but it also can use special abilities known as Valor Surges, one of which that can knock nearby enemies back uh, with a powerful attack. So this seemed like an ultimate meter type of thing. Mm -hmm. She was definitely fighting the dude, and then, you, you know, I don't know, Eleanor, whatever it was, um, went into an animation where she, like, put something into it was her spear. So clean. And it was really nice looking, shot a lot of electricity out. It was, it was really, really cool. Ilo will have a ton of, uh, oh, I just read uh, read that. Enemies have weak spots that can be destroyed using bows with specialized ammo. Cool. Um, was that in the game before, Jordan? You m most recently pl replayed uh, Forbidden West. Wasn't there already kind of that thing? Yeah, there was. Um, I'm going to turn this down real quick. Um, yeah, there was. If you certain arrow types could break certain parts of monsters that you needed, or I guess robots, I should say. Yeah. Um, they had specific areas that go and be broken by certain things, like yeah. some spots going to be broken by a spear, mm -hmm. some spots going to be broken by like the pinpoint arrow or whatever. Yeah. Um, but those weak spots have always been a thing because that's how you take out the monsters quick. You know, you break the weak spot, hit the vulnerable, and then you roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They well, also in there, there was like these little purple thing. I don't know if that was in the last game. I can't remember. But when she would shoot certain parts of the armor, they would glow purple. Yeah. Until they broke off. Because mm -hmm. some of them you kind of have to, like, not necessarily build up on, but you have to kind of charge the break. So, like, there was even um, some spots where you would have to hit it with one type of arrow and then another yeah. to cause the combo to break them off. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't played it since 2017, and I only played it for a few days before jumping to Breath of the Wild because that came out four days later. Mm -hmm. um, Aloy can use a slingshot with adhesive grenades that can temporarily stall machines. That looked really cool. That's mm -hmm. new. Yeah, that, it, was like a, it was like yellow. She shot it at, like, a mammoth. Covered him, in, covered him in this yellow stuff, and it kind of stopped moving, and she got her bearings, went and got into a better position. It was really cool. There will be powerful launcher, uh, a powerful launcher that fires spikes that explode on impact. Um, that seemed really cool. Very powerful thing, like blew up so much shit. Smoke bombs can temporarily blind enemies, allowed her to escape. All of these weapons and many more can be upgraded at a workbench. Um, was that a thing before, Jordan? I can't remember. No, it wasn't. The, so the way upgrades worked in the last game is you had to... Um, get the parts obviously harvest the parts for them and you just went to the you know, yeah whichever um market sold them and buy them yeah so you okay. can just upgrade them whenever so that's gonna be yeah. nice and i'm okay. pretty sure this was a new one as well that she can pick up weapons that she shot off of machines including the elephant like tr trimmer tusks um is that not, a thing it's not new but it's probably gonna add a lot of variability there's only like two or three you could do like yeah, it seems to be like bird. yeah, it seems to be like more in this one. She she used her heavy bow to knock off uh, one of the machine guns off its thing, and then ran up and picked it up and blasted yeah. it with it. So that was really cool. That'd be fun. Speaking of enemies and machines like the Tremor Tusks, the Horizon Forbidden West State of Play showcased the pterodactyl-like Sunwing, Raptor-like Claw Striders, and the alligator-like Snap Maws <laughs> and Burrowers. So that's it for the Horizon Forbidden West State of Play. Which, that game looks really good. Yeah, I thought it looked phenomenal and was quite beautiful. Um, the the underwater element is going to add some real nice spice to mm -hmm. it. Um, I think one of the things that I noted from the state of play is, I don't know, like I said at the beginning of this, I don't know how the fuck that's going to run it on a PS4. It will, but it won't like that. Yeah, because if you remember, mm -hmm. do you remember Black Ops 3? Yes. Yeah, so Black Ops 3 came out in that transition between the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. And if everyone remembers, I don't think it's going to be like this, but if everyone remembers for Black Ops 3, you would, like the previous gen game was like fundamentally a different game like mm -hmm. not only did it look worse but some of the maps were like smaller Just different, and yeah. didn't have things in them so i don't know i really i don't think that's going to have any play here but i think it's going to run like shit i think it PS4. just won't look nearly as good and especially a base base ps4 oh i think i think it's not going to be good i wouldn't i don't even know if i pick it up i don't know obviously we have to wait and see but yeah i'm excited I, i'll be shocked if it does play good really shocked that there was no date yeah, I expected for uh, Horizon Forbidden West to be the big fall game, and for God of War to get pushed into March. Mm. No date, nothing, at all. Maybe we'll get it later in the month. Or hear me out, push Horizon to fall, or push Horizon to spring. God of War actually comes out this year in the fall. That'd be interesting. But yeah, no but way. I don't think. I don't no think so. Way. No way. God of War's not nearly ready. But I imagine either up until E3 in the next week or in the next few weeks, we will get a God of War state of play that we will see some stuff from God of War. I think so. Personally, because I think, I think Sony wants to stay in the stay in the the mix, yeah. and all we've seen is Horizon. Obviously, they're not going to be at E3. Maybe we see a regular state of play with some God of War teaser, but I feel like we will see something about God of War really soon. Especially because yeah. there's been some leaks recently about names. I think I think the work. I mean, what else? What else could you see? Nothing. Some 
that Last of Us remake. I don't know. Yeah. There's, I think I, not too I really do think we'll see something from God of War. Maybe the setting, yeah. maybe maybe gameplay, probably not, but something from God of War. Mm-hmm. Um, pr- fairly soon, I'd imagine. Um, let's talk about another stream that happened this week. One arguably more important than the last Sonic Central stream. I think so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything announced, including a brand new Sonic game, a new Sonic game, a Sonic Colors remaster, and an Origins compilation, and much more. This is from Joe Scrubbles at IGN. Thanks, Joe. Uh, so here's all the things uh, that were announced. A new a game from the Sonic team were in, was announced. Tega announced that its Sonic team, which has previously released Sonic Generation and Generations and Sonic Forces, has begun work on a new mainline Sonic game. Uh, a teaser trailer revealed that the game will arrive in 2022 for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Okay. No other information was revealed, but the teaser shows Sonic picking up speed in a forest setting, which seems to cause digital effects around him before his trailer leaves behind um, what looks like a runic symbol. Sonic Colors Ultimate revealed. Sonic Colors Ultimate is a remaster of the 2010 platformer, which will come to PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC through the Epic Game Store on September 7th. This will probably get Noah very excited. Mm -hmm. Developed by Blind Squirrel Entertainment, who did Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the remaster will update the game's look and feel, as well as add new features and a new mode called Rival Rush. Sonic Origins compilation was announced. Sega also announced Sonic Origins, a compilation of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and Sonic CD. No release date has been announced for the collection. Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps animated short was announced. The company uh, took to accompany the Sonic Colors remaster. Sega also announced Sonic Colors Rise of the Wisps, a two-part animated series featuring longtime Sonic voice actor Roger Craig Smith, who recently departed and then rejoined the role for the video games. Mm-hmm. I, just, I don't know what happened there. I just want to know. I don't know. I think his contract was up, and they were probably exploring other options. And then they saw like the fans. And then yeah, and then his brought him back. And they yeah, were like I right, just well, come back. Uh, Sonic, there's a few Sonic cameos. He'll also make an appear, uh, an appearances in Two Point Hospital, adding Sonic theme items wow. on July 22nd, and Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Not to be confused with Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, mm-hmm. the official video game with players able to dress their athletes in Sonic gear. There's some Sonic games on new platforms. Sega announced that Epic Games Store will see the release of Sonic Mania on June 24th. PlayStation Now will receive Sonic Forces, Sonic Mania, and Team Sonic Racing on June 1st. And Amazon Luna will get Sonic Mania and Team Sonic Racing later this year. Shout out Luna. They announced a bunch of Sonic mobile game events. I didn't want to list. There was a lot. I didn't want to list them. We don't really play mobile, but there's a lot of mobile game events. You can look into that. Um, there's another burp. Sonic Prime for Netflix uh, update. The Man of Action team is working with Sega and Netflix on a new animated project. Joe Kelly from Man of Action offered a short update revealing Sonic Prime will be a 24-episode series where Sonic must, what else, save the universe. Sonic Prime will premiere on Netflix sometime in 2022. So, what would you think? Sonic fans are eating. Yep. Yeah, Sonic fans are eating. They the, got lots the only thing I would have been eating is Sonic Adventure 3. Sonic Adventure 2 Remake or Shadow of the Hedgehog. Those are things that I would have been like, okay, I'm stoked. But none of this really gets me excited. But that's not to say, I mean, like we were talking about, you know, on, and the classic kind of funny debate right now, what's mm-hmm. more popular, Sonic or, or, or Zelda? Um, Sonic prints money. Like, oh, yeah. Pretty I, intensely, I, Sonic's so. way more popular. Yeah. I don't, I, we haven't had that conversation, but yeah, I think <laughs> Sonic's have, way more popular. They're having it on the internet right now in the kind of funny circles. What's the, yeah. uh, what's the Sonic game where you had like the three man teams and you had the. Three teams? Is that Sonic Heroes? I'm not sure. Uh, Three teams? No, no. Where did you play as like uh, Hero Dark? Yeah, it was like like you had. But there's only did two you, teams. Did you play as like Rouge the Cat? Yeah, you could. Yeah, that's you, Sonic Adventure. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Really? No. Yeah. No, 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 no. In Sonic Adventure, you play as Rouge. You play as Google Knuckles. Sonic Heroes. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Cause okay. Let me get a remaster of that, and then I'll eat with the Sonic fans. Here's the deal. I, just release a, like a nice 3D Sonic Advent or Sonic game. It was Sonic Heroes. Yeah, and I think people will be fine. Mm-hmm. Like I just feel like it's just been a while. Maybe, cause like I don't know. <laughs> well, just they just did Sonic Forces dec- like three years ago. I know, but we ignore that one. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like a decent 3D Sonic game that's meant to be for everyone. I like you know? Secret Rings. The pull, cause okay, Pokemon does this, Mario does this, where I feel like they do a good job of pulling new fans in. Yeah, I don't know if Sonic is pulling new fans in. No, not at all. No, and I think that's what they With need the to focus on. Yeah, I guess so. But they could still do a better job with the games. Yeah, I agree. Because I, f- I feel like I haven't had a reason to be a Sonic fan in a while. Well, we'll see. we got this new Sonic game coming up. Mm-hmm. We just got the teaser. We'll see what that game ends up being next year. I'm excited for it. I'll play a new Sonic game. I pl- Maybe. I'll, I'll, wa- I'll watch some gameplay. <laughs> you, you watch some trailers? I'll watch, I'll watch some trailers. More Everybody. stuff for the future because we're on the lead up to E3. So we got news, news, news. Far Cry 6 release date set with a new gameplay reveal. Mm. This is by Liana Rupert at Game Informer. Thank you, Liana. If you haven't watched the gameplay, go and watch it. It looks very pretty but looks it very is. Far Cry. Yes. Far Cry 6 release date has been revealed alongside an extensive first look at what the next step of the Ubisoft franchise will have to offer. From petting those good puppers out there to riding nice. horses, the latest Far Cry looks to be an adventure. 
The latest Far Cry title is set to release on October 7th, as revealed in the character trailer release, um, showing off more of the faces of Far Cry 6, including a new look at Anton Castillo, played by... J- J- maybe it's Castillo. Castillo? Because isn't it in, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Castillo, played by Giancarlo Esposito, who we know and love. Set in the fictional world of Yara, Anton's dictatorship role was heavily inspired by his father, the former president of this location. Following dear old dad's execution after the people of Yara rebelled, Anton grew up fixated on the belief that his, this island was stolen from him and his family by those that rebelled. As he grew up, the idea of control became more and more enticing as the Castillo family continued to, continued to grow in power. When his, the son eventually became El Presidente, he sought to rebuild Yara in his own image. Rebellion, mm. unlike Lightning, does often strike in the same place twice, which is what the new, what the latest look at Far Cry 6 shows. There are many faces that are leading this new quest for freedom. Far Cry 6 is set to arrive on October 7th on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, Google Stadia, and Amazon Luna. Mm-hmm. Um, looked really good. Looked Well, it looked Far Cry. I don't know about really good. Looked oh, really pretty. it looks very Far Cry. Um, looked very pretty. Looks nice. The new animal companions, whether it's the alligator Chirizo. with the t-shirt or the, the dog with wheels. Chorizo. Yeah, Chorizo. He's so um, cute. Those look cool. Um, But yeah, it just looks like more, you know, Far Cry fun. Yeah. I think it'll be a good game. Yeah. I think I can guarantee a good game, whether or not it, like, gets back to, like, the crazy goodness of like Far Cry Three is is debatable, but what we'll, we'll just have to wait. I don't we'll know. I see. think uh, j- just assuming Giancarlo's in it, um, there's probably going to be enough good bad performances, yeah. yeah, for it to be like a cool mm-hmm. story. Um, simply because I feel like he could carry it as mm-hmm. a villain because he's done that in nearly everything he's done. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a great villain. Yeah. Phenomenal villain. And so I, it, it might be good. I like that they're trying to claim that there's no political message mm-hmm. whatsoever yeah zero has not you know no politics no politics <laughs> just a fictional story about overturning your government yeah <laughs> nobody not talk at all so um yeah i'm just in it for chorizo he's he's mad cute dude yeah that's a good looking dog I, he's all over my twitter i'm i'm messing with it and then i sent you a video of the uh the macarena gun mm-hmm. yeah that's nice the cd yeah yeah look really cool so did look really cool. I don't know well, if I'll play it though. I don't think I will, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Might might end up being a banger, and I might end up trying it. You know what? I will play. I will play this next one though. I actually will. Dying Light Two has a release date and a brand new name. This is by Sam Loveridge at Games Radar. That's right, people. Dying Light Two still fucking exists. Who could have forgot? Yeah, I, I don't didn't. know. I'm waiting. A brand new Dying Light Two release date has been revealed during a Techland live stream, along with the fresh title Dying Light Two: Stay Human. Techland Techland has confirmed that Dying Light Two: Stay Human will launch on PS5, Series X, PC, PS4, and Xbox One on December seventh, twenty twenty one. Wow. The new date comes after the game was delayed last year without the confirmation of any new release window. It was originally destined for a spring twenty twenty release, but Techland needed more time to fulfill our vision. However, we know. Uh, we know that we'll be diving into the zombie-filled world of, this, of the city before the end of the year. Both the release date and the new name are revealed alongside a lengthy gameplay trailer that showcases how the game's come along since we last saw Dying Light 2 at E3 2019 and gives an overview of the game's backstory. For this game, you're exploring the city, which is mankind's last stronghold in a world gripped by a virus. You'll use enhanced parkour abilities, just like the original game, to explore its open world, nice. with a focus on crafting and tactical combat. But Dying Light 2 Stay Human will also force you to make big choices that will impact the world and the events that happen within. For anyone who hasn't played the original game, which originally came out in 2015, Techland is also launching a Dying Light Platinum Edition, which collects the game and all of its DC all-in-one affordable package, which is available now on Steam, GOG, the PlayStation Store for PS Plus members, and the Microsoft store dope good yep. news G- very Just solid news very good news um hopefully hopefully it lands this year because this is a game we've been waiting I on think for it's a long a weird time date. it is a weird date but i don't know post black friday I'll, I'll take it yeah i mean of course i'll take it because i i'm excited i i really like the original dying light I i've actually too. been considering replaying it and i'm excited that they're keeping the same elements that made it good and just add, adding like solid story yeah building um, upon that foundation yeah functions Adding, you know, choices that matter, stuff like that. That's yeah. all cool. So I agree. Um, traversing that game. I'm. I have. It's I, just fun. I redownloaded Dying Light. I haven't clicked it to replay it, mm-hmm. but it's there for me. I never I, played the DLC. If, so if I finally go, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna start it. I've been really, really considering playing it. I'm kind of in a dry period. Mass Effect really did not. Uh, we'll get, we'll didn't get, didn't, we'll didn't grab me, there. but we'll get there. I think I might replay Dying Light 2 or Dying Light 1. I support. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited for that. Um, The IGN Expo is returning as part of Summer of Gaming. The IGN wow. Expo, an exclusive showcase as part of IGN Summer of Gaming, will return on June 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. UK, and 3 p.m. Central, dude. What the fuck? Come on, show us some love. But yeah, the IGN Expo coming back. That was the indie-focused um, show that IGN did last year. It's mm-hmm. coming back a little bit, uh, one day ahead of E3. So 
That's I'm gonna be it. a nice lead up. We also Is have the gorilla. Friday? Yeah, that's a Friday. We also have the gorilla collective that oh, same yeah. week. And they're going to be doing their day one that previous week, and their mm-hmm. day two is going to be the first day of E3. So okay. we're going to get a lot. We're going to ha- we're going to be stuffed full of indie so games in the lead up. So much. Yep. I mean, it's been a while f- since we had a long list of indie games. Yeah, I agree. Um, worth noting for all of you podcast listeners, for the week of E3, we are going to be probably um, we're we're still we're still workshopping it. We don't know how we're going to be able to pull it off. You know, people have work and stuff like that. We'll have to see. We might have to pull in some people. We might have to work the computer from over here. But we are probably going to upload multiple episodes, um, and that'll be through the weekend. So you'll probably see an episode pop up that Saturday, probably a couple on Sunday, a couple on Monday. Just depends on how we end up doing it. But we're mm-hmm. going to try to record recaps of each showcase immediately after recapping the showcase, talking about what we thought, and in little 35, 40-minute bits um, before we jump into whatever the next showcase is. Um, but we're going we're gonna to see what happens. It depends on people's work schedules and what we end up doing. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, and if we end, don't end up doing that, of course, we'll do an, a podcast episode that's just going to be extra long. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. Um, so the Xbox Showcase uh, has been announced with a date. Join us Sunday, June 13th for the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase. Nicely done. We now figured out they are putting them together one after the other. Smooth. This is from the Xbox Wire. Um, today, we are thrilled to announce the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase that will stream on Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Nice. The show will be focused on, that's 12 p.m. for us. The show will be focused on games from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and many game creators from our partners around the world. You've told us how excited you are about be- welcoming Bethesda into the Xbox family, so we now know we, so we know you're going to want a front row seat to the Xbox and Bethesda Game Showcase, a 90-minute show packed with everything you want to know. Uh, about the epic gaming lineup coming out of this partnership, the incredible games coming to Xbox this holiday, upcoming releases on Xbox Game Pass, and more. That's I'm actually all I know. really, really excited for the Xbox Showcase. I think they have mad potential to bring heat um, because, you know, the past couple They've of years... They've been sitting. The past couple of years, all we've been hearing from Xbox is purchase, 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 purchase. Um, now let's start seeing what you're going to be selling us. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what they uh, come up with. Really excited to see if we see anything from Starfield, from Bethesda, what else we see from Bethesda. Mm-hmm. Um I'm just really stoked. And for them to put them together, I don't know. I think it's a good move. I think it is too because I think it would be confusing if they didn't. Yeah. And I um, imagine we see like, hey, the first hour is Xbox and the last 30 minutes Bethesda. Something yeah. like that. A, a smooth transition in the middle. But then for them to market it as the Xbox and Bethesda showcase, I think is a good idea. I think so too. I just think having them separate would make sense. Yeah. Because everything you're showcasing is like for Xbox. Yeah. And for I also Xbox. imagine... On Game Pass. Yeah. I also imagine we see... Probably some fire drops for Game Pass on E3. Oh, some fire fucking drops. Yeah, it's about. I mean, it's about time. Um, the system's been out for more than half a year now. Yep. Um, I think it's about time to start loading it up mm-hmm. and and convince people why Game Pass and Xbox is the way to go. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I agree. Unreal Engine Five has a new gameplay tech demo and is now in early access. Pokemon Bro. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa Sorry, whoa, I down. forgot I didn't do an article here. Uh, Unreal Engine Five is a new gameplay tech demo and is now in early access. Have you watched this Unreal Engine Five tech demo? No. Okay, so they, they did a new one. It's about 16, 17 minutes long. Mm-hmm. This one actually has gameplay in it, and they released that tech demo online for people to use and for developers to mess around with, and they can edit stuff in it. Yeah. It's a hefty 100 gigabytes, but um, it, it looked really fucking cool, of course. Yeah. And also, yeah, it, they, they launched it in early access now, so developers are finally getting their hands on Unreal Engine 5. It's going to be a good three, four years before we start seeing anything, but... I can't remember. I, I remember someone saying that their game was being developed in Unreal yeah. Engine 5. I, it's going to be a bit before we start seeing anything, but I'm stoked to see what we see out of mm-hmm. Unreal Engine 5. I remember the jump from Unreal Engine 3 to 4 was a, was a big deal. Yep. And you see really cool things made in Unreal Engine 4, so... Shout out Epic yeah. for that one. Yeah, shout out Epic for that one. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will officially launch on Nintendo Switch Norse. on November 19th, 2021, with Pokemon Legends Arceus arriving later on January 28th, 2022. I get you excited. Um, the only thing worth notable uh, for this for me is I didn't expect Legends Arceus to be arriving in January. Neither I expected a, I. a March, That's April release. That's so soon. Yeah, I expected a March, April release. That's also uh, really soon to each other. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's a little odd. I'm going to be eating. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to be eating. November, sure. Pokemon. Yeah, you December, Dying Light. January, Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Back I'm to be Pokemon. Eating. There will also be a double pack um, for, for, for Pokemon, Brian Diamond, might. Shining Pearl. I can't do it, bro. The double pack. I've never bought the double pack. Yeah, I don't think that's for. I don't. I don't know why you would ever buy yeah. the. Double. Do they still have those 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 voucher things? What do you mean? The voucher things where you could instead of paying a, you could pay a hundred bucks for a voucher for two games. Yeah, and you could just get two games instead of paying yeah. hundred twenty. I just do that when I go to Walmart. <laughs> oh yeah, I just okay. buy them all for fifty bucks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess it's the same. Shout out Walmart. Yeah, I don't like corporate America. Yeah, I kind of sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on the corporate. 
Yeah, if yeah. you're giving me ten dollars off Nintendo games. Yep. In I that same like vein, there was some new Nintendo Switch Pro leaks. I <gasps> knocked the fuck out of my mic. So let's talk about these Language. Nintendo Switch Pro leaks. Nintendo's new Switch Pro might be announced within days and released in September or October. Uh, this within days was actually a few days ago. So we obviously didn't say nothing. anything. But I imagine we'll probably see something in the next week. The rumblings are on max right now. Mm -hmm. A new Bloomberg report says Nintendo may announce the console prior to E3, which starts on June 12th. Why would they do it before? Because there there might be companies that want to announce games during E3 that are going to come to the Switch Pro, and you want the announcement of the Switch Pro to have already happened. But and you want to you so. want to be able to say at your Nintendo Direct. And this game is going to launch on Nintendo Switch Pro. Yeah, but Switch that's where Pro. you start with announcing the Switch Pro. Yeah. And then all the but trailers after, like, Nintendo this always is going to be last. This is going to be on. But what if Ubisoft wants to announce Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle 2 with uh, Switch Pro upgrades? This is when you just do the last five minutes of the Nintendo Direct is all the games. That were already announced. Ran. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> this, yeah. Dude, this too, this yeah. too. No, I can definitely see. It makes it makes sense to announce it ahead of time. I guess if, it does. If Bethesda wants to announce an upgraded version of Skyrim is coming to the Nintendo Switch Pro exclusively. But it'd be so much more hype if they just... Yeah, I agree. Drop it in. Yeah, I agree. But we'll have to see. Like, just oh, hold on, picture it. The Nintendo Direct starts, and you hear a click, mm -hmm. but then you hear a, a second click, click <laughs> that you've never heard before. Stupid. You know how hype yeah, I yeah, get. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I yeah. Sorry. Um, they say it will feature a seven-inch OLED <laughs> display, 4K support, and cost more than the current Switch. Likely priced higher than the two hundred and ninety-nine dollars Switch, and it's going to phase out the OG Switch over time. Is the rumors that the OG Switch. They're not. They're gonna stop making it, and they're gonna mm -hmm. replace it with this new version. Yeah, um, they should. Amazon the Mexico price. listed it as the quote new Nintendo Switch Pro um, before removing it the next day. Yeah. So. What do you um, think? I've also heard that it's just gonna be two ninety nine. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I don't know what to believe. I don't either. But I, knowing what I know about Nintendo, honestly doesn't exist yeah <laughs> we're not gonna hear about it before 33 we're not gonna someone hear about lied to bloomberg e3. yeah some oh, cool, i think we're gonna nintendo. get finessed yeah in classic maybe. nintendo fashion maybe we'll, we'll have to see but just imagine that nintendo the right at e3 and they're like nintendo switch pro it's coming out in november i know and launching alongside it the Breath of the wild 2 and here's a gameplay trailer and I, we know what's gonna happen i told you about the two clicks it's gonna <laughs> that's how it's gonna happen if we don't see anything about Breath of the wild 2 on e, on nintendo's e3 um Gonna freak the fuck out. What are we gonna get? Splatoon three update. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Like, you know, we doubled the options of uh, personal uh, <laughs> character design. Yeah, I don't know. We have to see Breath of the Wild too. I would you be shocked to. if we didn't. And we might see some Metroid stuff. So, Metroid in a different vein, though, uh, this is a report from Polygon. Team Ninja making a Final Fantasy Souls-like action game. Final wow. Fantasy Origin rum rumored for PS5 and PSC. P PSC? PSC. PC. This is from Michael McWhirter at Polygon. Thanks, Neo and Ninja Gaiden developer Team Ninja is developing a new Final Fantasy spinoff action game for Square Enix, according to a report from Fanbyte. Shout out um, Imran Khan. Mm -hmm. That game, reportedly titled Fan Final Fantasy Fanny Final, uh, Final yep. Fantasy Origin, is expected to be announced in June in conjunction with E3 2021. Square Enix is confirmed to appear at this year's E3. Fanbyte's report follows a series of rumors regarding Final Fantasy Origin, which has been compared to From Software's Dark Souls series and Respawn Entertainment's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The Final Fantasy spinoff is said to be more accessible than Neo for a wider audience, and set during the events of the game, uh, the first game in the franchise. Origin is reportedly bound for PlayStation 5, with a Windows PC version coming later. Another component of the rumors, rumors surrounding Final Fantasy Origin is that Team Ninja will release a playable demo of the game this summer to solicit no a feedback from players. The studio similarly released alpha demos for Neo and Neo 2 ahead of each game's final production. Team Ninja and Square Enix already have a close working relationship, thanks to the former's work on Dissidia Final Fantasy NT, a fighting game featuring characters plucked from the wider Final Fantasy franchise. This gets me really, really excited. Oh, yeah, it's two of your favorite things. Yeah. <laughs> Final Fantasy, current day. And Dark Souls. Con Dark and Dark Souls. Souls. Yep. Yep. That's all you need. I'm really stoked for this. Hopefully we see Hopefully we see some really good stuff from Square Enix coming out of E3. Um, the rumblings on this lead up are really getting more and more intense. And for, I think For E3 in general? Yes. And oh, I, yeah. I think E3 is going to be popping this it's year. It's going to be a huge year. Yeah, I, feel like. I definitely agree. Here's an exclusive Ars Technica. Uh, uh, what? What's Ars Technica? To Ars Technica. Why did you say Ars Technica? Well, that's what it's from. Oh. Um, exclusive uh, article? Article? Well, how does that word sound wrong? Just say it's an Ars Technica exclusive. Yeah, we'll go with that. Valve is making a Switch-like portable gaming PC. This is from Sam Makovic 
at Ars Technica. Macarena. Video game and hardware studio Valve has been secretly building a Switch-like portable PC designed to run large number of games on the Steam PC platform via Linux, and it could launch supply chain willing by year's end. Multiple sources familiar with the matter have confirmed that the hardware has been in development for some time, and this week Valve itself pointed to the device by slipping a new hardware-related code into the latest version of Steam, the company's popular PC gaming storefront and ecosystem. On Tuesday, Steam DB operator Pavel Junk Jundik spotted the change in Steam's code, which pointed to a new device named Steam Pal. The name is a derivative of a previously discovered code term, Neptune, which began appearing in September of last year and came with a Neptune-optimized games string. Hmm. At the time, curious code crawlers throughout the uh, through thought this discovery referred to some type of controller. Technically, that's true. The Steam Pal, whose name we're putting in scarce quotes because we do not have confirmation of the device's final name, is an all-in-one PC with gamepad controls and a touchscreen. In other words, it looks and func functions like a Nintendo Switch, albeit without removable Joy-Con controller functionality. This is cool. We're never getting Half-Life 3. No. Never. No, it's not happening. But this is cool. It's neat. You know, because my biggest problem with PC gaming is having to sit as a PC. I've always... I know that sounds like a weird arbitrary thing. So that, Your problem with PC gaming is PC gaming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it would be nice to be able to play, like, exclusive to PC games on my couch. Because, you know, like, I wanted to play, like, um, uh, Loop Hero. I don't want to mm -hmm. sit at my PC, but if I could play it on my couch... You want to play it? Yeah. Be nice. That's fair. Yeah. I, think, I, I think, think this could be really cool. I think it is cool. I'm not gonna... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eh. Yeah, but it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Get excited for that. We'll we'll see if more news comes out of that in the next uh, few months. Michael Clare, Timothy Thoreau. That's it for the news. So this next section of the podcast that the follows one. the news the called "This Week in Gaming" is a section of the podcast you, where we talk about you guess what lines. when we did the thing and what you're this, stealing my line. This week I in usually game, say what following in history of of what a historical this week in gaming. Yeah, this week in gaming, yes, May thirtieth. Oh. Hello. We have a, a guest in a house guest. with the uh, aviators. Shout out, uh, shout out, shout out, Michael Duggar. What's up, Mike? Um, May thirtieth, Mario Kart eight dropped in twenty fourteen. Seven years. Yep. Same tracks. Yep. In a circle. Yep. Not new. We're not gonna get a new one for at least another seven years. Okay, who knew the eight meant eight years? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it means more than eight. It probably does. it means more than eight. Well, uh, well imagine, bro. No. Uh, dude, shut up, dude, shut Mario up. Kart 9. That game still prints money. I know. <laughs> but maybe. I mean, that'd be hype. May 31st, Ape Escape drop in 1999. Big one. June 1st, fucking Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay in 2004. Play Bro, that game if you haven't. Who would have guessed your favorite game of all time and me same day? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Who would have guessed? Happy, but what is it? Your, happy, it's, uh, uh, June 1st. I don't know. It's Mike's birthday on June 1st. Yeah. We're going to celebrate it next week on the pod? No. No? Not going to wear party hats or anything? No. Okay, all right, cool. Half-Life 2 dropped in 2006. Nice. One we're never going to get the follow-up for. No. No. <laughs> I, wait, Escape from Butcher Bay came out before Half-Life 2. That doesn't yeah, make sense. Two years, that kind of blows my mind. That doesn't add up. June 2nd, Sims 3 in 2009, and that says Valor's The in 2020. That's Valorant. Oh. Which surprised me that it's been a whole no, year, year since Valorant. It's only been a year? Nah, to me, I feel like it's been a year already. I don't know. No way. Yeah, that yeah. game is so uh, fair. Gone. Yeah, dang go. I guess it's fair. But people June third, murdered soul suspect in twenty fourteen. Do you remember that game? No. It was a game where you played someone who had been killed, uh -huh. and you played his ghost and had to help a living person solve your own murder. Mysterium. It was really, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. June fourth, remember me in twenty thirteen. One of the first uncharted spinoffs. Did you play Remember Me? No, but I listened to the song Remember Me yeah. from the hit movie Coco. Yeah. Yeah. No, Remember Me is a is like a is like a. Uncharted ripoff, very orange. Ah, uh, and it's about it's it's about remembering me. Like, yeah. The whole June fifth, the whole, whole game was what had like an orange tint to it. No, it's just like everything. Oh. You know how like Mirror's Edge is a lot of red. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Okay, yeah. I got you. June fifth, Earthbound in nineteen ninety five. Incredible Hulk in 2008. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. We always ask this every time we see Which Hulk. Which one? I don't know. State of Decay in 2013. It's been eight years since the first State of Decay. That kind of blows my mind. What a not me week besides Mario Kart. Yeah, very mediocre week. We're going to skip the game this Whack. week because uh, we have a decent chunk of emails and also because we just read a ton of fucking news. That was a lot of news. Now it's time to talk about the games that we've been playing. You or me? I'll go first. I've Kay. just been playing some Nautica, man. Wow. Kind of caught me off guard. Uh, like what I was saying earlier, about rolling down, down in the deep. deep. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Jesus. So uh, Mass Effect just did not get me, man. I don't know. The first one, I just couldn't get through all the art, just the archaic design of it. 
And a lot of people on the internet are like, dude, just make it a Mass Effect 2 and it's going to hit after that, right? And I can't. Rip. I can't do it. It couldn't, wasn't for me. Couldn't do it. Maybe I'll try again later. Couldn't do it for me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to everyone that I, I let Could down. Could always hit a everything you need to know before playing Mass Effect 2 video. Then yeah, but there's choices too. you gotta make and stuff. You I know, know. and it's about like, the characters. But, Even Jordan will, but will no, no, test no. for the generic because you can just hit play, and it has no, like you can't. A, no, what? it asks no, you, you like five questions, and it's like, what decision did you make here, here, yes. here, and here? Oh, I now, thought you no, could just the Mass run Effect in. trilogy is like one of the few things in gaming where the decisions you make in the first one matter a fuck ton now, for two. And I two thought three. It, I thought it was because you could. I thought you could just you can do that, but that's whack. Well, yeah, but if you just want him to try Mass Effect 2. No, because there's characters that can die in Mass Effect 1, that if they die in Mass Effect 1, they're not in 2, but if they live, they'd be all the way in 3. Yes. I know. I get that. But there is a way to just play Mass Effect 2. Yes, there is. Yeah, but like... But here's the thing, though. It's, it's about the journey. Mass Effect 1 is the shortest game, so like if you can't get through that, I got nothing for you. Yeah. It's just not my feet. It's because, you know, in Mass Effect 2, like that's where you get like a lot of overhaul and a lot of the things, and the thing gets better. But I just couldn't get through 1. So I decided to jump into Subnautica and fucking swim around and build stuff. I'm having a great time for some reason. I don't know. I love Subnautica, though. It's really good. Might replay Dying Light 2. I got Lords of the Fallen locked in. Might replay mm -hmm. that. It's real nice. Nice. What have you been playing? Uh, Playing a little more Village. Haven't gotten very far. You haven't beat no. it yet? Okay. I just haven't had time. Yeah. Um, And then me and Kylie started It Takes Two. Mm -hmm. Good game. Super fun. Yep. I... I when you talked about like how you die and you're immediately back in, yeah, exactly true. Yeah, <laughs> I love that so yeah, much. Great. Um, we've it's hilarious too. Beaten like the first two bosses, mm -hmm. the vacuum, the toolbox, the vacuum and toolbox. Yeah. Um, super fun. I like it a lot. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I th yeah, I find it very funny. Um, gameplay super fun. Um, uh, easy to get. Both, both sides of the puzzle solving seem pretty even. Yeah. Um. I will say the games don't. The mini games? The, some of the mini games we played the don't G feel even. Well, the mini games are all even except for Whack a Mole. Whack a Mole definitely was in my favorite as the guy. We'll see, as the guy? Yeah. Okay, so if, if we interviewed Chance Rayner right now, he would tell you the guy had no chance at all to win. He would tell you it was 100% favored as the girl. Really? Yes, 100%. And he'll once he listens to this episode, he'll, he'll pop and the Discord to tell you. And also the one where. The hammer has to run around hitting the light up things, and the guy can shoot him. Oh, I'm, I missed that game. You must have missed Me it. Me and Chance both missed that game as well. Okay. That one seemed heavily favored in the yeah. guy as well. Because I, I was playing an FPS, yeah. and Kylie was running around trying to hit him. Yeah. And it's easier to just Throw. shoot stuff. Yeah. I missed that one with Chance, and I missed that one with, with Adri as well. And I also think it's worth noting... Um, it's important to note, like, if you're playing... Like, with Chance, a lot of the games felt really even. Um... But except for chess, obviously, I think mm -hmm. you really start to see the disparity in like skill level in video games when you play the mini games. Yeah, I played like four or five mini games with Adriana, and like she, she just can't come close to. Yeah, but because you know she's not really into video games, so I just dominate the mini mm -hmm. games. But there's still a fun little side thing to do. Yeah, really good game. I, I enjoyed some more today. I'm excited to I'll play have a lot too. more to I'll talk about on the what you've been watching section in the movie podcast tomorrow because there's I a lot. A lot. Law TV. Now it's time for reader mail, though. You can get your questions right on the show by sending an email to synchedupod at gmail.com. Just like you put four emails in here. Four emails. There was a lot more that I could have put in there. We got a fat oh, stack we, now. We, okay. But I what? trust you. We was running out. So I was like, oh, no, we ain't out now. I'm like, we got one like at 15 a time. in the sauce. One, Chance's email had like 10 and it's one at a time. Yeah, no. Spencer writes in, uh, how much reverence do you give video game review scores? Are there certain sites that give out scores that will persuade you one way or, the other, or another to purchase and play a certain game? So how much reverence do I give video game review scores? A decent amount. And are there certain sites that give out scores that will persuade me? No, not at all. I only really look at aggregate scores like Metacr mm -hmm. Metacritic and, and, and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and there are a few. There In the same vein, like if someone like Greg Miller or Tim Geddes is like, this is a great game. If you like these type of games, play it. That gives me reverence. But specific sites and stuff, it, really. Yeah, it has to be specific people. The only time I care about review scores is when I'm trying to defend how good a game is <laughs> to someone. And I'm like, you can't argue the score, you know? <laughs> like, obviously, it's critically acclaimed. Yeah. You have to like, like it. Biomutant, I would have played had I not looked at the reviews. And then I seen the reviews, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to play this. That's so that you get a little bit of stuff like that, but it's not, I don't know. It's not, and especially us doing the podcast, more often than that, we're playing, one of us is playing whatever game it is that yeah. has come out. Um, and with rare exception, like Biomutant. I don't know, Isaiah's playing it. That yeah. kind of counts. I guess that kind of counts. So, cool. 
Yeah, I uh, it's mostly just personal people, mm-hmm. whatever they think. Yeah. Chance writes in. What does he say? If Game Pass is added to the Switch, yes. do you think Nintendo will want to add games to the service? If so, no. what games would they add? So, Nintendo, no. Would not. Fuck no, dude. Breath of the Wild 2 is still $60, dog. It's 40 this weekend for more day weekend if you go to GameStop. Yeah, so uh, Nintendo doesn't discount their games or give them out for free. I yeah. mean, just look at the NES thing. Look at the, the the garbanzo beans that they're putting on that and not all the classic games. And then, you know, if they release, like, the in, in Nintendo 64 Classic or whatever, you know they ain't going to put, like, all the iconic games on there, you know? Like, it's going to be You'll missing get- so many. They don't add shit. But if they were going to, it would just be some Cheeks mode stuff. Like, well, not Cheeks mode, but, but like, because Luigi's Mansion 3 is, like, all right. But it would be stuff like Luigi's Mansion 3. Not even. But maybe that might even be too high. Of a- I don't think they would put anything on Game Pass. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. I just don't think it would happen at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. Nintendo doing anything for anyone else? No. <laughs> yeah. Never. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Lucas writes in, what's the best marquee example of video game writing pre-Last of Us? Dude, I couldn't fucking tell you. Because to me, Last, Telltale. Of, Last of Us Telltale Telltale Games. was after Last of Us. No. I'm pretty sure. No. Walking Dead was before, and Wolf Among Us was before. No way. Yes, sir. Fact check. I'm pretty certain. <laughs> Fact check me, Jordan. I don't think it is. Uh, um, last was one, 2009 certain. or 2008. I'm pretty sure the first Walking Dead came out first. The Last of Us was 2013. The yeah. first Last of Us was 2013? Yeah, dummy. Yep. You feel stupid? Are you sure that wasn't... Are you sure? No, that's what not What are you right. going to say? I'm pretty the sure that's... One? No, that's the Last of Us it whatever was edition. released on July 2014. Yeah. The remastered version? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you tripping. No, it's 2013. Did you say Dang. 2008? Before Minecraft? 2009. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Hella off. Yeah. I'm, do I I'm, even need to fact check the rest of this? Yes, you do. No. When Walking did the first Walking Dead episode come out? Definitely before. Are we talking about Telltale? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, and and no. Wolf Among Us. 2012. Yeah. Damn. And right. Wolf Among Us was before that. And well, there you go. I don't think Wolf Among Us was. Yeah, it was. It was the first one they did. What? Well, it was the no, first. It? it was the first big one they did. I thought The Walking Dead was before Wolf Among Us. No way. Us. Yeah, one hundred percent. Wolf Among Us is like two years after Walking Dude, Dead. You're over two right now. You sure you want to keep going? Yeah. What does it say? Uh, came out twenty thirteen. So it came out same year. Well, now I. But it came know out after Walking. Came out it came out after Walking Dead. Are you sure? Yeah, he just said twenty thirteen. Walking Dead was twenty twelve. Oh, I thought they were both twenty thirteen. No. So it came out after Walking Dead. Okay, Walking Dead. Um, what others? I can't think of anything else because I had nothing. I genuinely had nothing. Like, because ga- game stories didn't start popping until around then. I don't know. There's got to be some good ones. Like, when you just look at stuff in the past, it just... Walking Dead. Nothing was, like, no. focused on the story Yeah, it was lot. all gameplay mechanics. Oh. Mass um, Effect. Mass Effect 1? When was that? Mm, I should know that. That'd probably be around the same time. Probably. A couple years before, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the original Uncharted. Yeah. Um, Not no, for me. Uh, but. Um, Uncharted one was, was that? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. When was Mass Effect one? Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. That feels way too old. But also, I don't know if I would say two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. I wouldn't say that'd be a really good example in marquee like. That's just RPG. writing. I think that's marquee world building. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, pre Last of Us. I mean, yeah. Get much better. What What does the internet say? I don't know. Best, just look up like best story games. Best story games before Last of Us. Yeah, you don't even have to do that. We'll, we'll just well, see the list. The and if they're all, I know, but we should be able to pick it. Well, then we it's know. gonna be like Spider Man, God of War. It's just gonna be all shit within the past four years. That's is, gonna be a long this list. Is just ten story heavy games. If you love to play Last of Us. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's it's all gonna be new titles. There. What about they're newer titles? What about Heavy Rain. Um, I say we got two more. The Origami there. Killer. Bioshock's on there. Oh, Bioshock, yeah. Spec Ops The Line on there, and yeah. I agree with that. Definitely Bioshock. Far Cry's on there. Uh, nah. nah. <laughs> not at all. Horizon's on there. Yeah. But that's not prior. Yeah, I, I think know. Bioshock might be your best answer. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that just feels more world building. But I think that's, I think that just goes to show of like, that's when this is kind of, that year, around the year was when that shit started to change. Mm-hmm. Started to become more of just a narrative. But he's talking about writing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah. So I think world building is included Kinda in writing. Same. Oh, The Witcher. Eh. Yeah, they didn't, but they didn't pop off The Witcher three. Man, that's a whole book. 
No. Yeah, and it's a book. Did Beyond Two Souls come out after that? Beyond Two I Souls? love Beyond Two Souls, but yeah, Beyond Two Souls, I think it's 2014, 2013. Um, oh, Bioshock Dead. might be your I best answer. I love Beyond Two Souls. They, this guy says the original Red Dead. Yeah. My my mm. vote's for Bioshock. Yeah. Probably. There you go. There you go, Lucas. Or Mc- Walking Dead. Miguel writes in. Miguel. It's been a while, Miguel. Hey, guys. I hope all is well. Glad to hear y'all went on vacation. We as a nation are known to be the worst at taking time off, which is why so many people hate their jobs. Can't take care of yourself if you don't take the time. To- Take the time to take care of yourself. Hope you enjoyed it to the fullest. Mm-hmm. I recently got back from vacation myself in which I got to see parts of my home country I hadn't seen before and saw family for the first time in 11 years. Awesome. As a bonus, four days after my return, my partner and I got back together. He's worked through his issues and regained his balance and is ready to move on in with us. So needless to say, I've been very happy. That's awesome. very good to hear, Miguel. I've been thinking of getting It Takes Two and convincing him to play it with me, but wasn't sold on it because he's not a gamer, at least now at least not the way I'm a gamer. After hearing Tim talk about it, I'm definitely going to get it and convince him to play it, uh, join me for a playthrough. I think we need to participate in each other's hobbies more. That's, that's yeah, that's True. a very, very good thing. Um, and if he's not a gamer, I think this is the perfect game for someone to I also go into your that. hobbies. Yeah. You may have already touched on it by the time you get to this, but what were your thoughts on Forbidden West? Awesome. I love Zero Dawn, and I'm looking forward to this game, but the 14 minutes of gameplay didn't really do anything for my hype. <laughs> I love, I do love the way they've expanded on the melee combat, though. Um, my thoughts on Forbidden West is I think it's going to be really good, really pretty, and if you don't have a PS5, I would advise you getting one before you play this it game. It seems awesome. Yeah, but it does seem very good. And again, those Horizon uh, story takes a lot of precedent in those type of games so just seeing gameplay trailers kind of a little difficult to get an idea of what's really going on in the, mm-hmm. in the story if there were only two games left in the world during the week of e3 these games being final fantasy 7 uh, remake intergrade and rift a uh, ratchet and crank or crank ratchet and clank rift apart and everyone had a ps5 and you had to choose between one of those games which would you choose and why i guess the question is more for mike since my guess is tim would go with final fantasy remake intergrade until next time miguel i think you're wrong i think tim goes with ratchet and clank there um, I do. Then that's simply because I value DLC low, 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 yeah. low. I'm still gonna play Final Fantasy Remake Integrate. That's gonna be the exception to my normal rule. But DLC usually doesn't ever pull me. So I would play Rift, uh, Rift Apart before. I Integrate. I've been extremely excited for Rift Apart. So yeah. definitely gonna be Rift Apart for me. Hundred percent. Um, I I just feel like I don't have a real reason to be excited about Final Fantasy Seven Integrate, and I think that's because the things that got people excited was meant for the people who played the original yeah it's not like here's new awesome combat or something like that here's yeah. just here's more characters you know from the original game yeah it might be some cool, cool stuff that just, adds to the know. story but we'll have to see yeah i i mean i'll probably play it um do you know how long it's supposed to be no okay i'll i'll play it i mean i have no reason not to i enjoyed yeah. the, the original game but definitely ratchet and clank i think that's more if i'm choosing for the whole universe ratchet and clank mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. definitely that um Good stuff, Miguel. Good stuff. Gl- gl- glad to hear from you. Glad, glad to hear your your life's getting a lot better. Glad to be a part of the story. Yep. And part of the journey there. Mm-hmm. I hope it doesn't end there, and I hope we hear from you again. Yes, yeah, sir. However long. Play. Uh, it takes two. Yeah, play. It takes two. Do that. Mucho recommend. Of course. And that's it for this episode of the Synced Up Podcast. We actually mm-hmm. made really good time. It's only been fifty minutes. Whoa. Yeah, we, we can't. Yeah. Okay. We can. <sighs> Did I think of one last time? Yeah, I, I think did. you did. No, I did for the movie podcast because mm. it was Willy Wonka. Oh. Did I for the video games? Uh, I think so. Maybe. Did I? Who did? I think who? you did. How do you do? 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 You know, the kid from Rugrats? It's not Rugrats? Oh, the Thornberries? Yes. That Rugrats. is the Thornberries. How do you do? Yeah. The, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. You played me for a sucker, Penny. We got to talk about the CGI. I ain't going out like that. We got to talk about the CGI in Rugrats. And your chicken next. was dry. Real dry. Sometimes I can't talk to you because you're just in the middle of a quote and you won't stop. You, you like, will just continue. You don't like film work? Okay, cool. What were you saying? I got a character. I'm hungry. Um, Is it, is it exclusive to one of the big three? No. Is it uh from... Huh. Is this character the main... Is it playable? Is this character playable? I don't think so. Cool. No. Ugh, my head hurts already. <laughs> is this come on, bro? Is this from after 2010? Yes. Uh, cool. Is this character from? I don't know, man. Why is my brain not wanting to work right now? Yeah, and three questions. I know. The gun is pointed at you. Uh, bop, bop. Is this a game that I've played? Bop, bop. No. No. Okay. That's interesting. Bop, 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 bop. The dog. <laughs> uh, hmm. 
No, burp, the, burp, burp. The, do- the meme. The, do- the burp, dog burp, of wisdom. Burp, burp, burp. The dog of wisdom, yeah. Um, is this character good guy? Yes. Cool. What is If the ball doesn't fit in your mouth, it's not your ball. Yeah. Burp, 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 burp. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going. Um, does this character? Come why? on, come on, bud. Doing it at the end is like fucking me. Come on, you got this. Um, so this <laughs> it's not a game that I played. Is this character from current gen? Well, not current gen as an Xbox One, PS4. Yes. Last gen. I guess that would be last gen technically. That would be last gen. Yeah. Do you want to? No. Yeah. Pick, you want? Is it gonna be on last gen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'll be on last gen. Wait, what? What? On last gen? Wait, what? What are you saying? Is the character on? It's from last gen. PS4, Xbox One. I never said it was f- from anything. Like, I, that's why I asked. To be from something, you must be out there already, correct? What? Hmm. Hmm. What? Is this character on a game that is playable on the PS4 or the Xbox One? Technically, no. Technically, no. Is this character from PC game? I'm. As like, can you play him on a PC? Can you play the game that this character is in on a PC? No. So that doesn't make any fucking sense. Is this character? What? Why? Is this character playable? No. No, I already asked that. Don't. That's not a new question. <laughs> um, is this character's game playable on the? <sighs> no. Dude, what? <laughs> so it's post twenty ten. Yes. I already asked that. It's not on PC or the Xbox One or the PC. Or is this character's game playable on the not Switch? Yet. No. Is this character's game? Uh, out yet? No. Is this character a female? No. That's ten questions. You got ten more. I'm thinking. And you got you got the big puzzle piece. No, I was trying to guess if it was Rivet. Damn. See, I was on the Rivet wavelength too. The Rivet's from Ratchet and Clank. And she's playable. Oh yeah. yeah right. I know exactly who it is. Um, this character's game is not out yet. No, it's not. Hmm. Is this character from a game that's animated? No, that what? No, no, forget that. Forget that. What forget do that you question. mean? Forget that question. I meant like cartoon character, but forget that question. Okay, okay, I'm forgetting. Because another question already no, answered. I was about my to say question. they're all animated, sir. I know. I know. Uh, what's not out yet, dude? Fuck. This character a bad guy? No, why already you asked, already if, it's asked if it's a good guy? And you said yeah, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, My man's only no ten questions. Is this character human? No. That's eleven. Is this character crippled? Yes. Is this character Trezo the dog? It is Trezo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. I gave you a big hint with the bra, 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 bra. Mm. and you didn't pick up on it. No, I was just that was that. the dead giveaway. Yeah. Okay. If you had deciphered that. Cool. And that's it for this episode of the Synced Up Podcast. Thank you for watching or listening. Um, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash synced up and liking and subscribing and doing all the jazz. Sharing with your friends. Follow us on Twitter at Synced Up Pod. And we will see y'all next week. Goodbye.